And, um, uh, June 19th, yesterday was my birthday, I tell you. I um, celebrated home and just reflected on many years, on 45 years. You know, it's, it's something how that come down on you. you look back, I, you know, called old girlfriends that I thought that should have been my wife. <laughs> you know what I mean? I called old girlfriends and said, you know, uh, right before, but right before, like the president, when he get out, he signed pardon. Right before uh, 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 1030, because I was born 1030, June 18th, uh, 1963, uh, six months, 17 days, I mean, 100 years, six months, uh, 17 days after Emancipation Proclamation. Right, so I was my mother's freedom child. All right, then. She always called me, referred to me, huh, my father, that was born 100 years after the freedom. You understand? It wasn't real freedom because we still had that Jim Crow law line. Well, today is Juneteenth. Yes, and today is Juneteenth, so this is for the Texas brothers and sisters that got freed uh, in uh, in June mm -hmm. of 1863. My people come from Georgia, so they were free January first you see mm -hmm. really you know and um uh, uh coming up to january 1st uh 1862 they were free that know? just proves um, if you don't know you're free you're right. not free yeah, exactly you know but a good thing that after dr king come along with the you know speech and everything in washington the march on washington and then we got the school board uh bird or what was it uh, brown versus the Wade. board of education yeah, yeah and then so after all that right there that right there is really when the real freedom come and if you look at if you look at the whole diaspora of black people, no matter where they come from in the world, you see the independence of their country from colonial powers and things of that nature. So all that mean, Ken, when we start going out of our way and trying to be so different, mainly we have the same story. You know, We're all one people. All one. All one blood. I, I, I remember meeting a brother in St. Thomas that was by way of Jamaica, and he sold me a coconut. You know, mm -hmm. cut the coconut right. on the top. with the machete. Yeah, with the big machete. You know what I mean? You know, a little frightening there, you know. <laughs> Dark little road, you know. And, and I drunk the coconut so fast, he gave me another one. You know, he said, remember one thing. We all one blood. You understand? And it, and it is true. But it's good coming uh, uh, to you today, folks. You know, um, again, you know, we're at June 19th and everything. I feel good because I'm going to start titling things after 45. You know, I'm, I'm after 45 now. You know, uh, 10.30 yesterday I was 45. Now I'm after 45. I'm heading on down, on up to 50. You know, keep hope alive. But we continue to, you know, do what we can at the church of what's happening now in town, talk, or, you know, and try to work with the community and bring, you know, just bring us all together, you know. I mean, yeah, that's what it's all about. Today, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here with Victory, you know, V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, Deborah Dow. She's running in uh, uh, November for uh, uh, councilwoman at large. Is this the first time? Because no one is councilman at large. Is this the first? No, there one? have been other women who have sat on the council in Plainfield for years. Okay. That's one thing we can definitely say. All right. As, we, as, as at large, in the at large position? And in, in, in per, and uh, various positions. Okay. Um, we also had years ago a female assemblywoman. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, I think women have been present. This is the first mayor we've had, but women have been present and active in politics in Plainfield wow. for years. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. So let Plainfield be what would be the, the term today, diverse? Well, my father used to tell me that you can tell the level of education of any people by the level of education of their women. Yes, Lord. Because the women are the first source of knowledge for the child. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with that. I got a lot of my knowledge from my, my mama, but again, you know, arrogance set in, and I remember telling my mama when I said, you're a very smart woman, but when I want to learn how to talk to women, I'm going to talk to daddy. She used to chase me and say, get on out of here, boy. You don't lost your mind. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, there's always any good excuse to talk to daddy. Yeah, it's it's yeah, a good yeah. thing. You know, so keep hope alive, you know. So now, you went to Washington yesterday for the hospital. Well, we got up at, well, we left at 3 in the morning. Okay. We, we got up a little earlier than that. I had a little faith in myself, so I didn't go to sleep. All right. We left from City Hall, six of us, and we went to have breakfast with the Senators Lautenberg and Menendez. Oh, okay. How was that? 
Well, I've never done that before, though I understand many people routinely go to Washington and lobby their representatives in the Capitol. There were several people there from other parts of New Jersey. There was a large Pakistani delegation. I heard about that. And they, when they saw the Muhlenberg signs, because we don't go anywhere without our signs, they said, Dr. Sadiq. And if you remember, Dr. Sadiq spoke at the hearing. Sure, sure, So they didn't sure. know who we were, but when they saw Muhlenberg, they identified with one of our people. And this is the most diverse movement it's been my pleasure not only to participate in, but to see. I have never seen this many people from various backgrounds. We have Indians, Pakistanis, Chinese, Korean, not to mention every time of type of a, of a black person you would want to find. Sure. And, and I really am proud of the, the white men and women, many of them with totally white hair, mm -hmm. who have come and marched in picket lines. Yes, People yes, older yes. than the both of us yes. have marched and have shouted and have carried this message as far as we can take it. And, you know, I'm just proud to be one of them. It is a great opportunity that I suggest everybody participate in. And you can join us today at our vigil from 9 in the morning to 9 at night. We'll be having postcards available that you can send messages to the governor about saving our hospital. All you have to do is ride down Roosevelt. We're opposite uh, the, the emergency room and the hospital entrance in a vacant lot. Near the tennis courts, we have a little canopy. Pitch. Is that Roosevelt or is that Randolph? Oh, pardon me, I keep making that Randolph. Randolph Road. Thank you. Okay, okay. Don't want to lead you astray. Don't lead you astray. <laughs> yeah, keep hope alive. You know? Right, right. <laughs> but I mean, it's we'll be there to nine o'clock tonight with a large supply of postcards. Anything you like to say to Governor Corzine, this is your opportunity, and we will get your messages there. Well, Governor Corzine owed me a favor because I remember. Uh, many years ago when he was running and they had the election, I mean, they had the debate with him and Doug Foster at the uh, Crossroads Theater. Mm -hmm. And I think this was the time I first joined the Harvest family, uh, 2005. And I remember when um, uh, William Bennett, the one that wrote the book on, on um, what was the book here, a uh, book on, uh, 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 in fact, it kind of, me that he would say something like this. I can't think of a book. He was a either. political analyst of some sort. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you see him on, I think, CNN sometime. Okay. I think that's, right. that's the same Bennett uh, and, and everything. He, when he said, if you want to, um, uh, uh, the Book of Virtues he wrote. He, oh, rewrote, okay. he rewrote the Book of Virtues. And he said that if you wanted to uh, clean up the black, I mean, the cities, mm -hmm. you know, abort all black babies. And I, you know, of course, I was... At the time, two weeks on harvest, you know what I mean? I was two weeks on harvest at the time when he said that, and I came in here, and I'll never forget, Yvonne Nunn was the engineer on the other side, and I came in here, boy, and I really let it go, you know, I said, they're going to kick me off, of they're going to throw me out, I'll never be back, you know, but thank God that we got past that, because well, we I, I lost it, because I, you know, my mother... And father raised me up to recognize that Jim Crow law. I could recognize it, and anytime someone would say anything about executing people, then I tell you, I lose it. You know, so. But I, that is the extreme. You know, what right. we're dealing with is something I'd like to call genocide light. Yes. That's a little different than extremes. It's when you deprive people of the basic necessities that it takes to sustain and to prosper and to thrive. Yes. You may not see it as a holocaust. You may not see it as an atrocity until yes. something like Katrina happens in New Orleans and it is written large for a world to see. And what we're fighting is to keep from being a tragedy right here in this community. We've had flooding. Not recently, but we've had loss of life from sure, water in sure. the 80s. Somebody died on Richmond Street. Okay. So Greenbrook and Donellan are not the only communities threatened by uncontrolled development in the hills above us. And we will be in the lowlands without our hospital sure. if certain people have their way. Well, you know, and, and, and that's why, you know, uh, um, Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the Church of What's Happening Downtown Talk, a talk show where we here today. It's, I, I often say that, you know, the, the battle, you know, it's not over. You know, we, if we want victory, we got to come on up out of the houses and, 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 and stay. Like, I went after William Bennett years ago, like I said, 2005, two weeks on the radio. I did not know 
these people, they did not know me. You understand? I didn't know whether I was going to be tossed out on my back. You know what I mean? But it was just that the love of my family and the love of all that we have contributed to this nation. And, you know, it.